Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to cover part 3 of my preparatory program for the Fundamentals of Engineering examination. This is part 3 or part 4 depending on how you're looking at it. It's actually the fourth video but only part 3 of the material that I wanted to cover. So as the agenda shows, the first three videos that I've done covered an introduction examination to the test center equipment and the online FE test experience. And today we're going to talk about the study materials and tools, part three. I want to first talk about the various printed material that will help you in terms of studying for the FE exam. And this is going to be a study based part of the review. The first thing you should have is PPI, which I think they've been taken over by somebody else at this point, but PPI still has a role in it. They're review manuals. The one I have here is the FE review manual that talks about the tests that I took, the electrical and computer review manual. To supplement this manual, I also have a book that talks about some practice problems. Now I found this very, very useful. As you notice, look at all the tabs that I created for each of the sections. And I did it for both the review manual itself, and I highlighted them with the colors that we'll talk about later, what those colors represent, and some of the areas that were least important. For example, blue in this case was a least important section. However, I also have the review manuals that my son used, and he took his test within a few months of mine, but his was, was the mechanical test. In addition to that, you should invest in the actual practice exam that is provided by NCEES. I found it extremely useful. It covers problems that were, well, let's just say, they were so close to what I saw in the test, it was scary. So it's just something to keep in mind. I found that going through this, and I went through it twice, as you noted, notice here, I did not answer in the book, which is different than what my son did, because he got the same test for his mechanical test, but he went ahead and answered the problems in the book itself. These are materials, obviously you're only going to be taking one exam, I hope, so really you just need the review manual, and then the practice problems, and then the practice, practice exam for the particular test that you're doing. And I believe that NCEES has a practice exam for all seven of the possible tests that you can take. Another thing that you need is the NCEES handbook in a PDF form. Let me open up that handbook so you can get a look at it. So this is the PDF. It'll be very similar to the one you'll have available to you during the test itself. This is an older version, 9.4, than what I believe is out there now, but it's close. If you have this book, obviously the search function in the PDF reading, reader does work properly. I'll be doing a whole separate part on just this book alone, so I won't go into it much at this point at all. But as you can see here, the entire book is online. Now you can use the hard copy printout during your study time. I did not use that. I used the online one as much as possible, unless I was in a place where I didn't have a computer. That's why I made the hard copy of this manual. And I also brought that with me to the PE exam, which it came in handy to help me with a couple of questions on that as well. Other things that you need to have. I already showed you calculators in a previous one. I'll show them to you again. The two calculators that are approved, the, the better end of it, there's many that are approved on the list, but the, the top end of the Casio and the top end of the TI is the only ones that I really considered. This is the Casio FX 115 ES Plus. And this one here is the TI 36 X Pro. And again, I'll be covering a separate lesson on the calculators. On that little lesson, however, I will most likely focus entirely on the TI calculator. 
Now other things that you need to have, and some of which I spoke about in a previous lesson, which I won't show again here, you can look back at my previous one. That's the erasable sheets or a book, markers that are erasable, and the alcohol that you need to erase them. Also, I recommend that you have a hard copy notebook. And I, I use this one, I bought it online. I'll put the link down below along with other uh, material that I have here. But this is actually my actual study plan that I use during the test. So I put up here a copy of what you'll see in a few minutes, my actual study plan sheet. This one was for the FE, this one was for the PE. I used the same book for both, which is good because then I brought this with me when I took the PE exam. But in here, I put some handy little pieces. We'll talk about that ABC calculator in a minute. But I also put in all of my notes as I was studying certain types of problems. And occasionally I found that there was something I wanted to put in, like Pascal's triangle. And we're talking about quadratic equations. You will see how that will be very beneficial to you. Probability, but you can see all of my notes are in here. And I broke it into two parts, one for the FE, and then later on I put the PE stuff in here as well. For this one book, and I didn't even use that much of it, maybe about one quarter of it. So there's plenty of room, with the, I believe it has a hundred sheets to start with. And then you need a straight edge. Now you can either go with a ruler, I like metal rulers when I do that, but for this FE test what I brought with me was 180 degree protractor. But that provides the ability to draw angles and straight lines and measure things as well. The sheets they give you have some graph paper capability but during your practice I suggest you also have a hard copy package of graph paper as well. It comes in very handy when you're trying to graph certain types of problems. The ABCs. There is a method called the ABC method for studying for the FE exam and full credit for designing that study method for the FE belongs to a Mr. Joel Irway. And he also is the author of the online book, 30 Minute EIT, How to Beat the FE Exam Without Beating Your Head, published in 2014. And I'll put a link down below to purchase it. I think it's only an online book now, but it's, it's worth the 10 bucks or so that they charge you for it. On the slide here, I actually have a link to a YouTube video that he produced that talks about his program in general. I used Joel's method as a starting point, and then I made some modifications to it in creating my study plan. Here is an example of the ABC calculator that is provided by Joel. And I believe if you get his online book, he will give you the ability to register on a website and then download this tool. Now the version that I have here is not, um, obviously it's just a screen capture of it, but actually when you look at this part here where it says step one, select your discipline, where it says with a yellow highlight electrical and computer, well that's actually a drop down, and you can pick any one of the seven exams and come up with the right breakdown of the questions that that exam has. You'll see all the subjects listed and these are out of the specification sheet. Here is the fundamentals of engineering electrical and computer exam specification. So this has all the sections in it that you can expect to see on the FE exam. And what Joel did is took each of these numbered titles with a range of questions, which is what this is. When it says number of questions, the minimum and the maximum, and he put them into his tool. So that's where those numbers came from. Each one of these on the left hand side here represents one of those top sections. And then over on the right, this is where you're gonna have to make a judgment call and you'll modify it as you go through the program. I think I changed it three times. Let me see here. Yeah, this is my third version of it that I actually went through in terms of where I put things in terms of A, which I have in green here versus the B, which I have in yellow, versus the C, which I have 
in pink, which I'll explain that in a moment. But he has it shown on his tool here as A, B, C. And the idea behind this tool, just to give you a brief summary of it, is anything that's in the A category, you should put things there that you think, give it enough time to study for it, refresh yourself in most cases, and during the test that you'll have enough time to actually answer 85% of those questions correctly. Whereas the B, that information that you expect to get 60% correct. And then the C, you expect to only get 25% correct. Now that 25% interesting number, which we talked about earlier. When you're actually looking to study for it, keep that 25% in mind. Because during the test, as I said in the previous part of this review program, if you just answer the same letter to all the questions, you're going to get around 25% right. He also has a note in here, you should only have a maximum of four subjects in the C category. I only put three in there. Now this is my first pass at the tool that you're looking at here, which I later modified as I went through the program. Go to see Joel's review of it and also get the ability to download his tool. And you can use it for whatever test you're taking as well. Some things you need to know, some of which I've already said, the AP, ABC study method that Joel has devised is based upon the topics uh, for each flavor of the FE exam. These topics are the major topics. The percentages of questions in the calculator are based on the range of questions shown by the, the FE exam specifications. Now what I did is I created a study plan, but I based it not entirely on the ABC. I used that as a starting point and created a plan where I could actually keep track of my studying. And what I did is I allowed for three passes through all of my study material in the PPI book. On the first pass, I went through everything in the PPI book. The second pass, however, I did not. I went through only the A's and the B's. I did not cover the C's. And then the third time through, I only covered the A's. And that's shown here by my study plan. You see the grayed out areas being the ones that I did not do. On second pass, the yellows. And on third pass, second and third pass, the reds. So here is a easily readable version of it. And what you see here is the sequence numbers, they are highlighted in color. Now I rearranged everything so that all the greens are first. That's why you'll see it jump. I shifted things around, in particular in the third area, the C category, the pinks. And I actually highlighted one that I wanted to really consider to be a problem, the, the electromagnetics. But there were others that I decided along the way too. Now the prime objective for using the ABC study method for the FE exam is to identify where you should spend your memory cells, how much you have to remember, and your study time. You should consider using the 50-40-10 division of your time. Now this is not the thing that Joel said in terms of what your guess is on how many you're going to get right. This is how much of your actual study time you should invest on each of the three categories. This is something I came up with after going through this three times, but I spent 50% of my time on the A subjects, 40% of my time on the B subjects, and finally 10% of my time on the C. This is important. Among the C subjects, try to keep an eye out for what I'm referring to as sacrificial lambs. These are subject areas you should spend the minimal amount of time studying. Let's say the first time you look at it, you realize it's not going to happen. Be prepared to leave any questions you encounter like that during the test blank. Those are really the deep red C category. That The best choice on that is not to waste the time studying, definitely not to waste the time during the test, but to leave it for a guess. You may choose, as I did however, to invest an initial three minutes. Now if you choose the topics for your A, B, and C carefully 
and then you act tactically like I did, you could give yourself more time during the exam, which is the important time, to invest in other questions that you have a better chance of getting correct. I probably saved a half an hour by skipping. There was a lot of Laplace and Fourier transform questions on my test, probably 10 or 11. I saved at least a half an hour by skipping those and I was able to spend that time better with other questions. With that, I would like to now give you quiz number two. As with quiz number one, I will give you five questions. And based on the critical points covered in the last two lessons, not just the last one, the last two videos, this one and the one prior. These will be stressed questions again. Get a pad and pencil or open a window on your PC. Get your smartphone or the computer ready with a stopwatch. Click on this video once you have everything together because once you click on it, the test will start. So click on the screen now to stop it and then click on it again to get it to go. So you clicked on it, so we're moving. A start timer will now start on the screen for you to start your stopwatch. Then the quiz will start when the screen reaches zero. Get ready. Question number one. Can you opt out of the NCEES agreement at the start of the FE exam? That's a true or false. Question number two. How many minutes will you be given for each half of the FE examination? 80, 160, 320, or your choice. Question number three. At what point can you view the summary sheet to see how you have been answering the questions? And this is for each half of the test. Choices are, once the test timer has started, after the halfway point for either part, after seeing every question for the first time, after answering every question for either part again. Question number four. At what points does the overall test time stop? A. Whenever you hit the pause button. B. At the start of the optional break. C. Only when the entire exam is complete. Or D. When you raise your hand and the proctor comes to assist you during the test. Question number five. What is the primary benefit of using the ABC method to study for the FE exam? Choice A. To identify which areas you need to focus your study time on. B. To ensure that you have covered every subject that might appear on your exam. C, to reduce the amount of time you need to study, or D, to be properly organized during your FE exam study time. Once you have finished answering all the questions, stop the stopwatch. Record the time that you took, and that includes the time it took to read the answers to this quiz, along with the timing goal and any calculations, will be provided at the start of the next video. The next scheduled part, part four, the NCEES FE Reference Handbook. I coined this section the only resource you have during the test. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And if you've gotten something out of it, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. There is no charge for subscribing and you will not be bothered unless you choose to select notifications, please subscribe so this channel can continue to grow. Thank you and good luck.